Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Let me welcome you to online Bible study slash Ignite Prayer School on today. I'm so glad that you tuned in. I am excited about sharing the Word of God with you on today. So I believe that you're ready to receive what the Lord has for you. Praise God. This is our third Wednesday of the month. And this month we've designated it as Ignite Prayer School. And so we're going to do a combination tonight. We're going to do online Bible study, but we're going to include some teaching on prayer uh, to fulfill our assignment of Ignite Prayer School. So why don't you do me a favor and share this broadcast. Invite someone that you know to tune in on one of our media outlets, whether it be Facebook, or YouTube, our website, or Roku, uh, Google TV as well. Uh, whichever one is most convenient to them, tell them to tune in right now. Text them, instant message them, direct message them, uh, tweet them, do whatever you have to do to get them to log on right now because I believe the word today is going to be a blessing and no one will remain the same. Let's give God praise for his goodness, for his, 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 his compassion towards us, his provision, his healing, his promises. Let's bless the Lord with all of our soul and all that's within us. He deserves all of the praise. He deserves all of the worship. He deserves all of our adoration. He alone, glory to God, is worthy to be Praise. Praise the Lord. Let's pray and then we'll get into what the Lord has for us on today. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I want to give you praise and give you glory and honor for your goodness. I thank you so much for this another opportunity that we have to gather ourselves around your word. We thank you that the word of God is alive. It's powerful. It's sharper than any two edged sword. And as I minister the word on today, I want to give you thanks for giving me utterance in Holy Spirit to speak a now word to your people. I declare and decree every heart, every mind and every ear is anointed to hear, receive and then do the living word of God. So I thank you right now for impartation, for revelation, for manifestation and for transformation that no person under the sound of my voice will remain the same, but will be changed in Jesus name name and I give you the praise and we give you the praise in Jesus name amen glory to God the Bible tells us in Proverbs chapter number four that the word is health to our flesh praise God and so we're going to declare Psalms 91 over our lives now when you declare this with me I want you to declare it in faith and expectation that what you declare will come to pass in your life. So let's begin at verse number one and declare the word of God over our lives together. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in him I will trust. Surely he shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover me with his feathers and under his wings I shall take refuge. His truth shall be my shield and buckler. I shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at my side and ten thousand at my right hand, but it shall not come near me. Only with my eyes shall I look and see the reward of the wicked, because I have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the most high, my dwelling place. No evil shall befall me, nor shall any plague come near my dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over me to keep me in all my ways. In their hands they shall bear me up, lest I dash my foot against a stone." I shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent I shall trample underfoot because I have set my love upon him. Therefore, he will deliver me. He will set me on high because I have known his name. I shall call upon me, excuse me, call upon him and he will answer me. He will be with me in trouble. He will deliver me and honor me. Come on, let's shout it with long life. He will satisfy me and show me his salvation. Praise 
the name of the Lord. Come on, lift a hand or both hands to the Lord right now and give him praise for the word because the word of God, amen, will come to pass in your life. He's not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. What he said, he is going to do. Praise God. Well, we're in our series of lessons on our online Bible study called The Journey of Faith. The Journey of Faith. We're also in our year of kingdom focus. And Matthew chapter number six, verse 33 reminds us to seek, aim at, and strive after, first of all, his kingdom and his righteousness, his way of doing and being right. And then all these things taken together will be given you besides. And so we understand from this that when we put the kingdom of God first place and his righteousness, the way that he does what he does, then the Bible says that things will be added to us. That means we don't have to chase things. Things will be added. And I'm still declaring that 2020 is going to be our best year ever in Jesus' name. Like I said, we're in our series of lessons called The Journey of Faith. Now, the word journey means to travel or traveling from one place to another. It also means it's a process of changing and developing over time. So we're talking about uh, living a life with God, living a life in the Word, and as we do that, we go to different, uh, we go through different development stages in our faith. In other words, if you've been walking with God for a number of years, your faith should be more effective now than when you got started. Praise God. And so Romans chapter number one, verse 16 tells us, it says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also to the Greek. Verse number 17 says, for in it is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. Say that with me. Faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Now, if you're a partner of this ministry, you should have Romans 1.17 in your heart because this is the foundational verse the Spirit of God gave me. Uh, a, a long time ago, uh, as it relates to this ministry, we're built on the just living by faith. Praise the Lord. From faith to faith in this particular scripture speaks of a progressive growing development of faith. The road is not always smooth. In fact, throughout our, our travels, we may encounter some challenges or some obstacles, but I, I love it because the Word of God says, as long as we're doing it by faith, we will have the victory. Praise the Lord. Check out 1 John chapter number uh, 5 to let you know that. Glory to God. We found out in this series already what is faith. We said faith is confidence in God that causes us to act on what he said without any sense realm evidence. I'll say that again. It's confidence in God to act on what he said without any sense realm evidence. In other words, we don't have to feel it in the natural. We don't have to see it in the natural. We don't have to hear it in the natural, but we believe it and act on it. We have confidence in him enough to act on just simply what he said. I've already stated uh, earlier that God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. What he said, that's what he's going to do. God, the word of God says God looks over or watches over his word to perform it. The book of Psalms says God is a covenant keeping God. He will not alter or change anything that comes from his lips. So if we can get, if we can get and understand and believe the word of God, that is God's word. That's his covenant to us that he'll fulfill exactly what he said. So we ought to have confidence in God in to the point where it causes us to act without any sense realm evidence. We also encourage you with this, that you as a born again believer already have faith. You already have faith. Galatians chapter number two and verse number 20, the latter part of that verse in the tra uh, Passion Translation says that Jesus pours his life into ours. 
So if he poured his life into ours, then the same faith that he had on the inside of him was poured into us. So not only do we have faith, we have God's faith. We have the same faith that Jesus had. Praise God. So if that's the case, we can believe God and we can expect to do the same things that Jesus did. If you're, watch, uh, if, if you're watching uh, on a platform that allows you to chat on today, put in the chat, say, I have faith. Just write that in there, I have faith, and then follow that up and say, I have the faith of God. I have the faith of God. God. Go ahead and put it in the chat right now and release it uh, in, in expectation. Praise God. Then we had a discussion last week about Romans 1.17 because Romans 1.17 says, So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now, if you read that, uh, that scripture and read it uh, the way it's written, it says faith cometh, which denotes or uh, implies that faith is not already present. But we understood from last week that the translators put this in, uh, put this in uh, to help people understand the verse a little bit better. But we have to understand that we already have faith. And when we hear the word of God, that word of God that we hear energizes the faith that we already have. It stirs it up, praise God. It causes us to rise up and live and walk by faith. When I was thinking about the lesson tonight, on uh, in this particular point, uh, our oldest son, uh, Anthony, uh, is taking photography in school at this time. And I was excited when he came home and told me that they were going to do some photography with a digital camera, but also they was going to do some photography with a manual ca uh, camera. I don't know if any of you even remember that, but it came in a little... Uh, a uh, roll of film, and the film was inside this, uh, this, this cylinder kind of thing, and you put it in the camera, and you started the negative uh, on the other wheel, and you cranked it a couple times, and you slapped the door shut, and when you took a picture, it put the image on the, the film. The, uh, the film, it wasn't automatic. It wasn't instant like we do now with iPhones or, or, or smartphones or digital cameras. We didn't see the image right away. You had to then take that and send it off and get the pictures developed or give it to someone to develop in what they call a dark room. Now, how, what does this have to do with faith? See, what happens is we have faith and that faith is being superimposed on our spirit man. Praise the Lord. And when the word of God comes, the word of God brings that faith that we have to light. It acts just like that solution that a, that a, 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 a photographer will put that image or that negative in to cause the picture that's on it that we might not be able to see with our natural eyes to come in the full fruition, praise God. That's why you got to keep yourself around the Word of God because there's faith in you that needs to be energized. It needs to be developed. It needs to be stirred up, praise the Lord. That's why when you're around negativity, it causes fear to rise, but when you're around the Word of God, it causes faith to rise. Glory be to God. So what I'm going to encourage you is to stay in the word. Keep hearing the word. When you read the word, don't read it silently. Read it out loud so you can hear yourself and energize that faith that you have on the inside. Is anybody with me on today in Jesus' name? I, I, I believe that you're seeing that. You have faith. Now it's up to us to get into the word of God, stir that faith up, energize that faith, and then go and live by faith. Praise the Lord. Amen. So tonight, being Ignite Prayer School night uh, or day, we're going to talk about the prayer of faith. The prayer of faith. I told you we're going to do a combo uh, right now. We're going to do online Bible study, and we're going to do Ignite Prayer School at the same time. And I tell you what, you are going to be blessed. <laughs> Praise God. Let's go to John, 19, uh, John 19 together. Let's go to John 19. Because I want to uh, lay, uh, do some background before I get into the, the principles of the prayer of faith. Uh, I'm going to make some statements, but I'm also going to look at some scriptures to help us bring, uh, help, uh, help bring some understanding to this prayer of faith. Now, remember this. Don't ever forget this. Uh, faith makes prayer work 
prayer doesn't make faith work. Okay, let me say that again. Faith makes prayer work. Prayer doesn't make faith work. You got that? So when we pray, we ought to pray in faith at all times. So whether we're praying the prayer of intercession, whether we're praying the prayer of, uh, of worship, whether we're praying the prayer of commitment, whatever type of prayer uh, we're praying, the prayer of supplication, whatever type of prayer we're praying, we should be praying in faith. But there is a prayer of faith, which is also called petition prayer. But don't forget this. Prayer, um, excuse me, faith makes prayer work. Prayer doesn't make faith work. Now, why do I go, keep going over that? Because a lot of people are praying to get into faith. You don't pray to get into faith. You get into faith first and then you pray. <laughs> you got that? Again, no matter what you're praying for, you need to be praying in faith. Uh, I, I, I've run across people uh, throughout the, the tenure of me being in ministry and pastoring that people are praying to get in faith. They're praying and they're in fear, they're in doubt, they're in unbelief, and then they're scratching their head wondering why their prayer didn't come to pass. It's because you didn't do your part for, first. You got to pray in faith at all times. Again, faith makes prayer work. Prayer doesn't make faith work. So until you get in the faith, until you have confidence in God, don't you begin praying. Stay in the Word. Keep meditating the Word. Keep confessing the Word. Keep studying the Word. Get yourself in the faith. Get yourself your confidence in God to a level where when you pray, you know it's a done deal. Is it, are you with me today? Praise God. I believe that, that was worth you tuning in on today right there. If I stop there and say the benediction, you, your life should change just from that particular truth right there. But you know I got a not, lot more to share with you on the day. <laughs> Praise God. All right. John chapter number 19. John chapter number 19. Let's go over there uh, together and let's begin. Uh, let's look at verse number 28. John 19 and verse number 28 in the New King James Version. All right. Look at this. It says, after this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. Verse 29. Now a vessel full of sour wine was sitting there, and they filled a sponge with sour wine and put on hyssop and put it into his mouth. Look at verse number 30. So when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, check this out, folks, it is finished. And bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. Now, I'm going to go back to verse 28 and, and repeat something real fast just so that you can understand where I'm going with this. Look at this. Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled. So, as Jesus was hanging on the cross there, Jesus understood that he had done everything that needed to be done to have all Scripture fulfilled. So everything that needed to be fulfilled was fulfilled through Jesus' obedience. So when he got to his final act of obedience on the earth was to, that was to give up his life, he could say, all things have been accomplished that, that needed to be accomplished to have all Scripture fulfilled. And so now we jump down to verse 30, and he says, has, makes this statement, it is finished. It is finished. Glory to God. I remember when I first heard uh, uh, teaching on this, I was in Bible school uh, some years ago, and uh, the instructor said this. He says, Jesus and God has done all that they're going to do about your situation. I said to myself, then I'm in trouble. <laughs> Glory to God. Because I was working on some things in my life, and I was like, if he's finished doing all that he's going to do, then what am I going to do? All right? But then through further understanding and further teaching on this, 
I found out that Jesus completed, he fulfilled, he paid the price for everything that belonged to me. So now I don't have to pray the, pay the price any longer. I don't have to, uh, I don't have to uh, accomplish anything in and of myself for what's already been ordained for, for me because he did it for me. So when he died and when he rose again, glory to God, he secured for me my healing. He secured for me my health. He secured for me my peace. He secured for me my joy. He secured for me my favor. He secured for me everything that I would need in life. He secured it through his obedience. So therefore, it's a done deal. That's why he said it is finished. Glory to God. It's finished. It's done deal. I don't have to go and redo what Jesus has already done. My, my posture now is just to receive what he's already done. So through that revelation, I got excited because now I know now I knew that Jesus had already taken care of him. God has already provided everything that I need, want, or desire in this life. Remember, he's omnipotent. Remember that he's the alpha and the omega. He's, the, he's in our beginning and he's in our end at the same time. Glory to God. So if he's already been at our end, how many know he's already put in place everything that we would ever need, want, or desire? Listen to this. Listen to this. According to Scripture, before the foundation of the world. Glory to God. Before we ever got here, before we, our mother and father ever even thought about getting together, uh, Jesus, our God, put everything in place for us before the foundation of the world. So then when he put us in the earth realm, everything we needed was already here. Glory to God. Remember, we, said that, we see that example in the life of, uh, of Adam. Remember, God put things in order. God put, put the trees and, and the water and the, and the, uh, and the, uh, and the mountains and, and the herbs, everything. He put the, the light, the, the dark. He put everything in order. He put, put everything there, and then he inserted the man. And that's the order of God. God prepares everything first, and then he puts us in it. Glory to God. So, friend, your life has already been laid out. There's a scripture over in the book of Ephesians. I believe it's 2.8. Ephesians 2.8 said he's already predestined and preordained those good things that we, should, uh, that we should walk in. Glory to God. Experiencing the good life. God, God saw what, everything we need, and he laid it all out. Praise God. Let me tell you all something, something right now. It's already done. Come on. Type it in the chat. It's already done. Done. Come on, type it. And while you're typing it, shout it at the top of your lungs so I can hear you uh, uh, up in here. Praise God. Let me hear you say it's already done. All right. So he says it is finished. It is finished. God, Jesus has done all that they're going to do about your and my situation. Now, that means he's given us, he's bounced past us the ball. He took care of it. He won the game for us. And then he bounced the ball to us and said, now play life and do life like you win. <laughs> Glory to God. Woo, I didn't preach myself happy already. Oh my goodness. Come on. Shout, I win. I win. I win. Right where you are, living room, bedroom, in the car, at the office, wherever you are, just shout. I win as loud as you can before you, uh, so you don't have to get in trouble if you're at work. Praise God, all right? You win. You win. He won the game and then gave us the ball and said, now you play. You do life like you win. Why? Because we have won in him. Are y'all with me? Glory to God, all right? So let's go a little further. Let's go a little further. Now, I want to talk about something here because this came up in my spirit a couple of days ago as I was meditating on some things to share with you uh, on today, this came up to talk a little bit about uh, confession and uh, decrees, this, the confession and decrees. Because I think people, uh, because of a lack of understanding, I think people uh, have mushed these things together and uh, are not seeing the results that they should be seeing uh, in life. And, and listen, folks, I haven't lost my train of thought. This all goes in with 
the prayer of faith. Okay, this all goes in, but I want to I want to give some background before I get into the principles, because a lot of times we want to go to the one, two, threes and ABCs, but we don't have the proper understanding to support the ABCs and the one, two, threes. And then we begin the question why it's taken so long when you've done the ABCs and the one, two, threes, but you haven't didn't have the background or the foundation or the substance to support the ABCs and the one, two, threes. Do you see what I'm saying? All right. <laughs> Praise God. Now, confession. What is confession? Confession is this. Confession is to say the same thing. OK, let me say that again. Confession means to say the same thing. OK, now confession also means to give the same testimony, to give the same testimony. OK, it, it also means to agree with testimony, to agree with testimony. And then it is a statement of agreement. All right. So it is to say the same thing. It, it comes from, I think, a Greek word, uh, homologia, uh, to say the same thing or to give the same testimony or to agree with testimony or a statement of agreement. OK, so when we confess OK, what we're doing is we say the same thing that God has said. All right. So, for example, the scripture says in first Peter 2, 24, with his stripes, we were healed. So when I say with his stripes, I am healed. What did I do? I made a confession because I'm saying the same thing that God said. All right. Now, also, when we confess, we are saying or we are giving the same testimony, giving the same testimony. So the word of God is his will and testament. Now, the word testament, the synonym of the word testament is the word testimony. So we can say it like this, that the word is God's will and testimony. So now when we confess the word of God, we are giving the same testimony testimony. So when, again, Scripture says, or when he says, with his stripes you were healed, and when you say, with his stripe I, stripes I was healed, then you're giving the same testimony. And there's three places in Scripture, Deuteronomy, Matthew, and then 2 Corinthians, that says that there needs to be two or three witnesses in order to have something established, all right? So now, when God says it, and then you say it, there's the two. There's the two that comes into agreement. Uh, I think Jesus says something like this, that when two are together, praise God, God gets in the mid up, midst of it. So it's important that we confess the word of God and only the word of God because that's what we're giving our agreement to. That's what we're giving our testimony to. Now, on the flip side, when the devil lies to you, and then you say that lie, you also agreeing with him. So now you have two, an agreement, and that has to be established. Are y'all seeing this? Glory to God. This is some good stuff already. So, but we want, we, we are aware of that because the scripture says, don't be ignorant of his devices. We are aware of that. So we want to stay away from agreeing with the enemy and agree only with God. So when we confess the word of God, we're agreeing with God. We're saying the same thing as God. We're giving the same testimony as God. And the word says if we get two or three people giving the same testimony, praise the Lord, uh, two or three witnesses together, it's going to be established. All right. So let's let's uh, let, let's 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 go a little further. All right. Second Corinthians chapter number one. Second Corinthians chapter number one. Oh, boy, you 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 you're you're blessed that you tune in on, on today. I'm telling you that right now. This is going to be some stuff coming out of here. Praise God. I don't want to just, I don't want to belittle it. It's going to be some revelation coming out through this teaching uh, on today. All right. Look at this. Second Corinthians chapter number one, verse number 20. Okay. It says this, for all, A-L-L, -L, all the promises of God in him are what? Yes. And in him, what? Amen. Or so be it to the glory of God through us. All right. Now, that's a powerful scripture 
because it's letting us know that God has already said yes to everything he has promised, okay? That's why Jesus could say it is finished because through Jesus' obedience, he calls the promises of God to be fulfilled. Got it? So all the promises of God are yes and amen. So as it relates to promises, as it relates to promises, now, now, now listen to me real carefully. As it relates to promises, we can simply just receive those, lay hold on those, grab and take those because they're already done. All right. So in other words, you don't have to ask God to receive a promise that he's already said yes to. You can just receive it. You can confess the promise. Praise God. The promise is by his stripes we were healed. So I just confess. I don't have to ask God for healing. I can confess that I'm healed. Glory to God. And when I give that testimony and when I come in agreement with the word of God, then I get my two witnesses and it must be established. In other words, it must be fulfilled. It must come into manifestation. Are you with me? Are you with me? All right, come on. Uh, put in the chat. Say, I'm with you, Pastor. I'm with you. Glory to God. Now, let's go a little further. Ephesians chapter number one. Ephesians chapter number one. I promise you I'm going to pull all this th together uh, on today. All right. Ephesians chapter number one. Ephesians chapter number one. Okay. Because it's important to understand when we get down to the principles of the prayer of faith. All right. Principles of the prayer of faith. Uh, Ephesians chapter number one and verse number three. It says this. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Look at this, folks. Who has, past tense, blessed us with every, <laughs> every what? Spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. What is the Scripture telling us? Scripture is telling us, folks, that everything... Uh, is already in the bank. Every spiritual blessing is already in your account. That's what the scripture just says. He has blessed us. Not going to bless us. He has blessed us. That means he put on deposit. <laughs> Glory to God. He put on deposit every spiritual blessing for you and for me. It's already done. Praise the Lord. So now, if it's already done, my response to that is to lay hold of that, to receive that, to confess that, to agree with that, and walk in that. Praise God. He said every spiritual blessing. So peace is on deposit for me. So when I need peace, what do I do? Take it. <laughs> Glory to God. When you have money in the bank, and you need some cash, you just go down there and take it. Praise God. You request it and you receive it. Praise God. Amen. It's yours. It's already on deposit. Glory to God. You don't have to get anybody's permission to get your own money. No, you just take it out the bank. Glory to God. Amen. What do you say to people? I'm going to the bank to what? Get some money. You don't say I'm going to the bank to ask for some money. Not unless you're going for a loan. But if you already had it on, on deposit, I'm pull over here. I need to go to the bank and get some money. <laughs> Glory to God. So because peace is already on deposit for you, just go ahead and get you some peace. <laughs> just go ahead and get it. Glory to God. Pull it in. Receive it. Take it. Grab hold of it. It's already yours. Are you following me so far? All right. So he says every spiritual blessing in the, is, is for us in heavenly places. We just got to lay hold of it. All right. Now let's go a bit further, a bit further. Second Peter Chapter number one, 2 Peter chapter number one. I'm, I'm just giving some background. So when I go to the principles of the prayer of faith, you have the understanding that you need. All right. Okay. For 2 Peter chapter number one, verse number one says this. Simon Peter, a bond servant and apostle of Jesus Christ to those who have obtained like precious faith with us by the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Verse number two, grace and peace 
be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Let's pause there for about 30 seconds. He says, grace and peace be multiplied to you. Look at this. Through or by the knowledge of him. So the more you know about God, the more you know about Jesus, the more peace and more grace, favor, can be multiplied to you. What is he really saying? The more I know about God, uh, the greater confidence I have in him because my peace, I have greater peace. I have greater grace. And that comes through the knowledge of him. So now, the less I know, the less multiplication of peace and grace that I have. But the more I know of him, the more, come, the more I can walk in this multiplied grace and peace. Are y'all, y'all, y'all seeing that? Okay, let's go a little further. Verse number three. It says, as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness, through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, verse number four, by which have been given to us exceeding great and precious promises that through these you might be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Look at that, folks. Look at that. He says that he's already given us, already, past tense, already given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Everything you need to to live and everything you need to be godly has already been given to you. It's on deposit. Take it. Lay hold of it right now in Jesus' name. Shout, it's mine. It's mine, and I take it in Jesus' name. Amen. So now, when it comes to confession, we just can confess or say the same thing as God has already said. So we just read this scripture in 2 Peter chapter 1. I can now confess that he's given me all things that pertain to life and godliness. I can make it personal. I have all things that pertain to life and godliness. When do I have it? Now. So if I have it now, I don't have to look forward to getting it because I already have it when? Now. Because he's already blessed me with it before, before now. So because he gave it to me before now, I have it now, so therefore I don't have to look to get it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So because I don't have to look to get it, I don't have to ask for it, nor do I, do I have to pray for it. I just take it because it's already, my, already mine when? Now. It's already yours when? Now. Glory to God. So you just confess it, agree with what God has already said, have confidence in that, and walk it out and let it manifest in your life. Take it, grab hold of it, and receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. Y'all with me? Y'all catch that? All right. So now, let's go to a decree. Let's go to a decree. Now, decrees are different than confessions, okay? Because a confession is saying the same thing as Listen to this, folks. This, this is going to make some of y'all shout. A decree establishes something that you'll walk in in your future. Oh, glory to God. A decree establishes something that you'll walk in in your future. Praise God. Amen. So a decree then is creative. Oh, that's what, that's what the Spirit of God told me earlier today, that a decree is Created, creative. You release something out of your mouth based on the word and adding your faith to it. You re- release something and it be- that word that you release creates something. See, a confession doesn't create anything. It just agrees with something because what you confess has already been established. You got it? But a decree, praise God, is, it, 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 it creates it as you, as you decree it. Let's go to Job chapter number 22 and 28. Job 22 and 28. If you're getting anything out of this teaching, put some, give me some praise hands or some fist pounds or something in the chat. 
fill that thing up. Give me some heart emojis or something. Just fill that thing out. Just run it all the way across your screen if you're getting anything uh, on today from this teaching. Glory to God. Now, Job 22 and 28, um, it's, gonna, it's, it's right here plain and in black and white, what I'm, what I'm saying to you. Look at this here. A decree uh, establishes something. It's creative. Look at this. Job 22, 28, Amplified Translation. It says this. You shall also decide and decree a thing. Let me stop there for a moment. Glory to God. What do you want in life? What do you want? Not what somebody says you should have or not what you, not what you, uh, 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 yeah, not what somebody's or not what somebody's trying to put. What do you want in life? You got to decide, make that decision. Glory to God. What do you want in life? He says, you shall decide and decree a thing. Come on, let's go back to Job 22, 28. You shall also decide and decree a thing and it shall be, it shall be, it shall be what? Established. Okay, if it was already established, it wouldn't, it, there would be no shall be established, all right? Shall be established for you and the light, God's favor, shall shine on your words, on, on your ways. Apologize. Look at that. When I decree something, I release it in the atmosphere, and what I decree goes to work on my behalf to create what I decreed and then I walk in it in, in, uh, in my future. You see that? My decree goes out before me. My decree goes out before me. It, it brings to pass what I decree, glory to God, and then I walk in, I walk right into it <laughs> in my future. My decree sets up a, an appointment for me. Glory to God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's why I say sometimes, don't sit back and wait for something to happen. Glory to God, amen, make something happen. Praise the Lord, make something happen. Glory to God. Y'all seeing what I'm saying? For example, you can decree, I'm going to buy me a house. That's a decree. I'm going to buy a house, a decree. That word goes forth. Come on, it's in line with the word of God because he said he gives you the desires of your heart. You add your faith to it. And that word goes out, praise God, and begins to create the opportunities you need, the, the, uh, the people you need to meet. Uh, that word begins, that decree begins to bring all that stuff together. Because remember, it's, it's working with God's favor intact. It's bringing all those things together. And then you walk into it and you end up talking to the right builder, the right real estate agent, the right finan financing company if you need that or you get opportunities on your job to get increased. All these things working together. Where did it come from? It came from a decree. Praise God. Because you decreed it, that which you decreed begin to create that which you decreed, and then you walk into it. Are y'all with me today? Praise God. Some of y'all sitting back waiting for stuff just to show up on the front porch. It's not going to show up. Call it in, praise God. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. Woo, praise God. Wayne, hold your mule. Praise, praise the Lord. All right. Got a lot more to go, a lot more to go. Okay. I think we can do this. I think we can go. We, we'll go over a little, little bit over an hour uh, today, but I think it'll be worth your while. Okay. So listen to this. Listen to this. Very important. We confess promises or we confess the word of God. We confess promises. We decree our future. We decree our future. And we ask in the prayer of faith or the prayer petition, we ask for things. All right, let me say that again. I confess promises. Okay? I confess the word of God, which is full of promises. I confess promises. I decree my future. And I ask for things. Okay, I'll give it to you one more time. I confess promises or the word of God, which is full of promises. I decree my future and I ask for things. All right. So that brings us to uh, to the prayer, prayer of faith. Now, let me give you a definition of the prayer of faith or synonymously the prayer petition. They're both the same thing. You can call it a prayer of faith or you can call it a prayer petition. This, this is what it is. It is the prayer of asking. 
the prayer of asking, and also the prayer to change things. The prayer of asking and the prayer to change things. Okay, now, all prayer, including the prayer of faith. I told you I was going to make some statements, and I was going to go over some scripture. All prayer, including the prayer of faith, must, hear me out now, must, M-U-S-T, must be based on the Word of God. You hear what I'm saying? It must, M-U-S-T, be based on the Word of God. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. There's not a prayer that's going to be valid outside of God's Word. Okay, so stop trying to make up stuff. Stop trying to, to, uh, to, 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 to put your agenda in there and just ask God to bless it. No, God's, <laughs> the, the, the order is all prayer must include the word of God. So if you don't have a word on it, you better go get a, you better go get a word. Did, did you hear what I said? If you don't have a word on what you're about to pray for, you better go get a word. Don't you even don't you even open your mouth and ask God for something if you don't have his word on it because you're setting yourself up for failure, setting yourself up for failure. Uh, Dr. Wendy, uh, is, she, she's consistent with this, man. She's consistent with this. Somebody said, well, pray. OK, what word are you standing on? What word are you standing on? Uh, 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 nope. Mm -mm, don't worry about it. We we gon we gon we gon uh, we gon thank God that He extends the mercy uh, mercy and grace for you a little while longer. But go get a word, <laughs> praise God, because this thing is gonna be based on your faith. I can give you a word, but do you have faith in that word? Maybe maybe not. But what's the best way for you to get faith in the word? Is that you go get it and you meditate on it and you put it in your heart, you plant it there and let it grow up, and then that way you have faith in it, and you don't, and you don't have to be resting on my faith in what you want. Does that make sense? Glory to God. Yeah, so what word? So all prayer, come on, all prayer, including the prayer of faith, must, M-U-S-T, I know I'm hammering this, but it's so important, must be based on the Word of God. Scripture says Holy Spirit will lead you into all truth. He ain't going to lead you into all these kind of tangents. He's going to lead you right back to the Word of God. Amen. And we need to stop making up stuff and, 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 and asking and saying it's God when it's not. You know it's not God. You know God didn't tell you to do that. You know God didn't, didn't have you go that way or do that thing. You just want, you just want a, a way of escape. You want to escape accountability and responsibility, and you want to call it God. Well, God said, no, God ain't said, because I can't find it in the Word. I can't validate it in the Word of God. So if I can't validate it in the Word of God, he didn't say it. Amen. That's plain and simple. Ain't no use falling out about it. He didn't say it. If you can't validate it in the Word of God, God did not say it. <laughs> Praise God. That's our litmus test, the Word of God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Are you hearing what I'm saying? I don't hear you saying anything back. Let me hear you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Praise God. Let's go to Isaiah 55 real fast. Let's go to Isaiah 55. Praise God. This is some good stuff, boy. Glory to God. All right. Isaiah 55. And we're going to look at verses 10 and 11. And I'm going to read this to you out of the message translation. Isaiah 55, verses 10 and 11 in the message translation. It says this. Just as the rain and snow descend from the skies and don't go back until they've watered the earth look at this here doing their work of making things grow and blossom producing seed for farmers and food for the hungry so will the words that come out of my mouth not come back empty-handed they'll do the work I'll say it again they'll do the work Come on, I'll say it one more time. They'll do the work I sent them to do. They'll complete the assignment I gave them. Praise the Lord. All right. Look at this. Now, this is God saying this. Now, we, we have to take the same posture that God takes about his word. We need to take that same posture about ourselves. And so when we, when we release the word of God and we pray according to the word of God, we have to have this understanding. 
This word cannot, this word cannot fail. This word cannot not produce. Amen. It has to complete the assignment I gave it. So if I declare over your life, you're healed in Jesus' name. What did I just do? I sent the word to heal you. So from where I'm sitting, you're healed. You got to take that and you got to receive that too. This word cannot, this word cannot, cannot not fail. This word has to produce what, what, it, what it's supposed to produce. I gave the word and the assignment to do something and bless God, it's going to do it. Amen. The word is designed to do that. But we got to become confident in the word. I think I said something like this on Sunday that we got to start valuing the word of God. We got to start putting emphasis and trust and confidence in the word of God. Yeah, I said it on Sunday because I used the illustration from when I went to Africa. When that pastor said, pastor, he said, Dr. Fry, if you tell them, if you if you tell them, they'll believe it. If you tell them that this is the word of God, they will believe it. Praise God. So what was he saying? He's saying, be careful that you don't teach him wrong. Amen. And that's why there's so much manipulation or, yeah, there's so much manipulation in that region because they receive the word as the word when it comes from a man of God and, 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 and they take it. They go, they run with it. Praise God. We need to get to the same place that when the word of God is, is, is spoken, I take that and run with it. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Got it? So the word will accomplish. It cannot, it cannot fail. All right. It cannot fail. Praise the Lord. All right. Look at this. Luke 137. Let's go there a little bit further. Luke 137. We're almost there. We're almost there. We got uh, three more scriptures after this. Hold on. Hold on with me. OK. Uh, Luke 137. Luke 137. Look at this in the Amplified Translation. It says for with God, for with God, nothing is ever impossible. For with God, nothing is ever impossible and no word. Come on, if you got a paper Bible, you need to underline this. If you got an electronic device, you need to highlight that. No word from God shall be without power or impossible of fulfillment. Check that out. Jesus said no word can, uh, no word uh from God shall be without power. So if you have his word, you have his power. If you have God's word, you have his power. And nothing can withstand the power of God. Everything buckles underneath the power of God. Amen. Got it? So the word is so important. The word of God is so important. That's why it's, it's not fruitless. It's not fruitless to come Listen to the word on Sundays. It's not fruitless to get online for Bible study and a night prayer school on Wednesdays. It's not fruitful to study the word of God. It's, uh, it's, it's, I didn't say that right. It's, uh, it's fruitful. Let me say it that way. It's fruitful to come and hear the word of God on Sundays. It's fruitful to, to log in on Wednesdays online for Bible study. It's fruitful to study the word of God. It's fruitful to meditate the word of God. Amen. Because when you get that word, you have his power. Praise God. Because every word from God contains power. And I love what the last part says. It says it's, imp it's not impossible. Uh, it's without uh, power or impossible of fulfillment. In other words, there's possibilities in the word. Amen. It's possibilities in the word. Y'all with me? All right. Now, let's go and let's go get some uh, some principles here. Uh, yeah. OK, we good. We good. We good. About 10 more minutes, I think. About 10 more minutes. Praise God. Y'all with me? Y'all with me? Uh, if, if you if you can go a little further, uh, put in the chat. Uh, uh, go ahead, Pastor. Go ahead. <laughs> Just let me know that you're with me. Praise the Lord. Mark 11, 24. Mark 11, 24. We said that the prayer of faith is uh, the same as petition pay prayer. It's the prayer of asking. It's the prayer to change things. Uh, prayer to change things. Okay. So Mark 11 and 24. Mark 11 and 24. It says this in New King James. It said, therefore, I say to you, look at this. Whatever things, here we go, whatever things you ask when you pray, what are we supposed to do? Believe that you receive them 
and you will have them. What's the thems? The things that you believe that you received when you prayed. Okay. The them is not just things. The them is the things that you believe that you receive when you pray. You, you catch that? So if you don't believe that you received when you prayed, then you won't have the things. <laughs> I hope you're catching this. Glory to God. All right. Because the Bible says that when I pray and ask God for things, I have to believe that I received those things as the moment I asked them for it. Not when it shows up, not when I feel like I've received them. I have to believe that I received it the moment I asked for it. Not a second longer, uh, but at the same time. I'm asking, I'm believing that I'm receiving at the same time. In my ask, I'm believing that I receive. Then the Bible says, I will have them. What am I going to have? The things that I believe that I received when I asked them for it. You catch that? All right? So that's the prayer of faith. The prayer of faith is having enough confidence in God and what he said to ask God for something. Ask God for something and believe that you received that thing when you asked him. Got it? So now if I believe that I received the thing when I ask God for the thing, I don't have to ask for the thing again. <laughs> don't ask me to say that again. All right. <laughs> rewind, the, re rewind, the, uh, rewind the replay and catch that. Okay. Yeah. So that's the prayer of faith. The prayer of faith is I'm so confident in God that based upon what he said to me in his word, and I have his word on it, praise God, that when I ask him for something, I believe that I receive it. Amen. And the Bible says, I will have it. So I take possession of it when I ask, but then I expect it to show up in my future. Could be five minutes later, could be 30 minutes later, could be an hour later, could be a week later, it could be a month later. I'm not going any further than that because we, 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 I'm done with these uh, six months, nine months, one year, six years, 20 years kind of believing stuff. No, uh-uh, no, uh-uh, no. You get in this word and get more confidence so when you release your faith for it, it comes to pass in a much sooner. I, got, I see too many suddenlies. I see too many immediately. You shouldn't be believing God for no 25 years for something. Praise God. Amen. If that's the case, you, you need to check yourself. Praise God. It doesn't take God 25 years to get you anything. Glory to God. He, he brought down the walls of Jericho in one day. Yeah, they walked around six days on the seventh day, but it only took God one day to bring it down. Praise God. It took them six days to get themselves to where they can believe God for it, but he brought it down in one day. <laughs> Praise God. Are y'all with me? Amen. All right. Let's go to 1 John 5 and uh, 1 John 5 and we'll, this will be our final uh, scripture for the evening that we'll look at uh, or for the day that we'll look at. Y'all did good. Y'all doing good. Y'all hanging in there. Praise God. Okay. Look at this, talking about the prayer of faith, talking about the prayer of faith. Look at this, 1 John chapter 5, verse number 14. 1 John chapter 5, verse number 14 in the Amplified Version, okay, the Amplified Version. It says, and this is the confidence. Stop. This is the what? Confidence. What did we say the definition of faith was? Confidence in God. So he's talking about faith here. Okay, he says, this is the confidence, the assurance, the privilege of boldness, which we have in him. Look at this here. See, here's, here's confidence talking. We are sure, that's confidence. We are sure that if we ask anything, make any request, here we go, according to his will, in agreement with his own plan, he listens to and hears us. Pause there for a, for a moment, okay? He says here, look at, his, look at how much confidence is coming out of this scripture. He says, and this is the confidence, the insurance, the privilege of boldness that we are sure. See, that's confidence there. We are sure. There's no doubt. There's no skepticism. 
There's no unbelief there. We are what? Sure. When you're sure of something, a lot of times you can't be talked out of it because you're sure of it. All right. And this is what he's talking about here. We are sure that if we ask anything according to what is in agreement with his will, that he hears us. Okay. So God doesn't hear us because we pray loud. God doesn't hear us, uh, hear us because we, we walk when we pray. God doesn't hear us because we lay prostrate when we pray. God doesn't hear us uh, uh, just because, let me say it that way. God doesn't hear us just because we pray loud, just because we lay prostrate, just because we walk and pray, just because we bow our heads, just because we uh, get on our knees. God doesn't hear us because of that. God hears us when we present something of request to him based on his word, okay? That's when he hears us. When he receives a request from us based on his word, the Bible says that he hears us. Now, why is that important? Verse number 15, here we go. Verse number 15. It says here, and if since we positively know, sounds like confidence to me, since we positively know that he listens to us in whatever we ask, We also know, here's confidence again, with settled and absolute knowledge that we have granted us as our present possessions the requests made of him. Case closed. Glory to God. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Look at this scripture. If we present a request to God based on his word, he hears us. And because he hears us, that means it passes the, it passes the order. It, it, it complies with the order in which he's laid out. He hears us, and if he hears us, he, we positively know that we have been granted and we have as our present possessions the request that we made, know, that we made of him. What is, what, what is that in short? It's a done deal. Praise God. It's a done deal. I believe that I received what I asked for when I prayed. Amen. And I prayed it according to his will, which means he heard me. And because he heard me and I believe that I received when I prayed, glory to God, I will have what I asked him for. Amen. Are y'all with me? That's the prayer of faith, friend. That is the prayer of faith. The prayer of faith doesn't, uh, you don't pray the, pray the prayer of faith and then ask how it's going to happen. No, you pray the prayer of pray the prayer of faith, and then you thank God that it's already happened. Are you with me? Praise the Lord. So let me give you these principles of the prayer of faith, and we'll wrap this up and and let you go and continue to rejoice in the Lord the rest of your evening. Okay, here we go. Here's the ingredients. Here's the ingredients for the prayer of faith. Okay, here's the ingredients for the prayer of faith. The Word. Okay, you should have known I was going to say that. The Word. It, everything starts and begins with the Word. The Word of God, the, the, uh, the word of God is seed, all right? Everything begins with a seed. So all prayer, including the prayer of faith, must include what? The Word of God, okay? So the ingredients of the prayer of faith, the Word, okay? The Word. Of course, number two, faith. <laughs> of course, faith, all right? Or confidence in God, okay? It includes a request, a request or petition that you need to ask God for something when you're praying the prayer of faith, okay? You ask God for something. You believe that you receive it when you prayed it. It means a receiving, okay? The ingredients include a receiving of what you ask God for the moment you uh, asked him for it, amen? And then thanksgiving and praise that is already done. Thanksgiving and praise that is already done. So when you come out of the prayer of faith and you say in Jesus' name, amen, Father, I thank you, glory to God, that I received X, Y, Z when I prayed in Jesus' name, glory to God. The next day, Father, I thank you that I received what I prayed for in Jesus' name. Thank you that I received it. Just give God thanksgiving and praise. How long? Until it shows up. When it manifests, the transaction is over in the natural. The transaction is over, and you can go on to the next thing. Or you can, uh, uh, you can do more than one, ask for God for more than one thing at one time. I'm just trying to uh, keep this in sequence. Amen? Glory to God. So what does it include? The word, faith, 
a petition, a receiving, and thanksgiving and praise. You got it? The word, faith, or confidence, a petition, receiving, and then thanksgiving and praise. Those are the ingredients of the prayer of faith. And before you even think about asking God for something, get a word on it. Amen. Y'all blessed tonight. Come on. Give me some more praise hands. Give me some fist pumps. Give me some, uh, some high fives, uh, some, some heart emojis. Give me something to let you know. Let me know that you received uh, on tonight and you were blessed in Jesus name. Father, we thank you and we praise you for your word. Thank you for the revelation that went forth on today. I declare and decree that people, uh, people's lives were blessed and this word was planted upon the good ground of the people's heart and they will bear much fruit in Jesus name. Amen. Glory to God. Would you bow your head and close your eyes uh, and pray with me and pray for those that may have spiritual needs that uh, they desire them to be met on today. So if you're watching me and you're not saved, you're not born again, you're not a child of God. uh, Let me encourage you let me admonish you to give your heart to Jesus it is the it is the will of God that all be saved yes right it's the will of God that all be saved praise God so if you not if you haven't given your life and given your heart to Jesus uh, let us introduce you to him praise God give your give your heart to him I know he's calling you to him right now and all you need to do is obey God and give your heart to him. If that's you, why don't you use the information on your screen, text us, prayer, P-R-A-Y-E-R, to 434-830-0083. Give us your information, and then when we reach out to you, let us know that you want to give your heart to Jesus. Listen, if you text us uh, right now, we'll respond to you right away. Don't delay, don't wait. Now is your time. Listen, friend, You don't have to fix stuff in your life by yourself. You don't. You don't. Stop trying. Because if we could fix it ourselves, we would have fixed it long time ago. See, that's why Jesus came and was our, uh, was uh, stood in the gap for us, uh, was our substitute, praise God, was our example and gave his life for us because he knew, he knew we couldn't get it done by ourselves. So God sent the Savior and Jesus came uh, to to give his life for you and I. Jesus paid the price, friend. Jesus took our sin on the cross, took it to hell, conquered it in hell, and rose again in victory. And you can walk in that same victory yourself by receiving the finished work of Jesus. The Bible says very plainly, Romans 10, verse number nine, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you will be saved. I believe I'm talking to somebody right now that wants to give your heart to Jesus. So let's not even wait for you to have to text us and we call you back. Why don't you pray this prayer after me right now? Father, in Jesus' name. Come on, say say it with me. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for sending Jesus to die for me. Your word says that if I confess the Lord Jesus... And I believe in my heart that you raised Jesus from the dead, I would be saved. So, Father, I now confess Jesus as Lord. And I believe that you raised him from the dead on my behalf. Thank you, Father, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. God bless you, friend. Welcome to the body of Christ. If you prayed that prayer, reach out to us and give us your information. I, I, I believe with all my heart, somebody that's watching me right now prayed that prayer. You need to let us know. Why? Because we want to rejoice with you. All the angels in heaven are rejoicing right now, but we want to rejoice right alongside you as well. In addition, we want to get some information to you free of charge to help you uh, help your walk with the Lord get started off on the right foot. Again, friend, God bless you and welcome to the body of Christ. Amen. Maybe you're watching me this uh, today and um, you did give your heart to Jesus at some point in your life, but for whatever reason, you've fallen out of fellowship. You're you're not living like you're supposed to live uh, and you want to rededicate your life to the Lord on today. If that's the case, use the information on your screen. 
give us your information. When we reach out to you, let us know that you want to rededicate or recommit your life to the Lord, and we will pray with you. Also, if you want to connect with our ministry, become a partner or member of Faith Christian Center International, just simply obey God. If God is speaking to your heart right now, to connect with us, no matter where you are across this globe, if God is, is speaking to your heart to connect with this ministry, use the information at the bottom of your screen to let us know. Uh, let us give us your information and we'll reach out to you and welcome you as a partner of this ministry. Praise God. Amen. Now, before we let you go, I want to give you an opportunity to give and so into the kingdom uh, of God. The Bible says that when we give, it shall be given back to us in a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. So you should see some information at the bottom of your screen right now that lists out different ways that you can give. You can mail us in the check, you can uh, use our website, or you can use our mobile application by texting FCCINTL to 77977. You'll get a prompt uh, to use the, uh, the account that you've already set up, or you can uh, establish a new account and give right there using your mobile device. Whichever way you decide to give, we're most grateful and we thank God for that. So we're going to uh, leave that information up on your screen just for another moment or so, and then we're going to pray over our giving at the closing uh, prayer on today. Praise God. Amen. So as you're preparing your giving, let me share some announcements with you. I just want to remind uh, everyone to uh, be prepared and make your plan to vote on November the 3rd. I want your voice to be heard on November the 3rd. Praise God. If you're living in Virginia, you can vote early until the end of the month, I believe, the end of October. Uh, so you can do that as well. But before you vote, dive into those platforms. Pull up those uh, party platforms. It tells you all you need to know about what those parties endeavor to do if they are in office. Also, we remind everybody that Sunday, this coming Sunday, is Communion Sunday. Communion Sunday. And if you're watching us uh, online, you can participate as well. So get you some crackers and some juice. And when we're receiving communion here in person, you can follow along with us and join us right, right where you're watching us from. Praise the Lord. And then again, a reminder that at the end of the month, October the 31st, we're having the Children's Harvest Festival here at FCCI at 11 a.m. We're asking for volunteers as well as candy donations. Candy donations. May, please make, it, uh, make sure that it's peanut free so that we don't have any challenges with allergies. But I'm asking that you bring that and drop that off here uh, on campus so we can have plenty of candy to bless those children in attendance with. Praise the Lord. All right. So I'm going to get ready to pray for you uh, and close out. And I'm going to pray over your giving. Uh, and then we'll let you go. Let's pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I want to thank you and praise you, first of all, for this opportunity that we have to give. And thank you for providing us resources to give unto the kingdom of God. As we tithe, thank you that the windows of heaven are open and you point us out favor, wisdom, anointing, and doors of opportunity that we don't have room enough to receive. And as we sow seed, that you're causing that seed to go grow and bring us back more in Jesus' name. We declare every need is met and all debts are canceled in Jesus' name. Now, as we go our separate ways, we do thank you for our covenant of protection. You're keeping us safe from our harm. Thank you for those angels round about us, lest we dash our foot against the stone. Uh, we decree our lives are better because we live by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen, we love you. We appreciate you. And we are here for you. God bless you. And we'll see you soon.